Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca and today we are going to learn about the five love languages and how to determine what your love language is and your partner's love language is. But before we jump in, please give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe down below, and let's jump into it. All right, so this book, The Five Love Languages, is an amazing book. It's by Gary Chapman. I will link it down below, the Amazon link. I highly recommend this book if you are in a marriage or you're in a relationship and you've been struggling to understand and speak your partner's love language or vice versa. You don't know what your love language is and you would like your partner to reciprocate that love language but you don't know what it is. So we're gonna talk about the five love languages and I'm gonna give you some examples of what they are. And then in this book, actually there is a quiz so you and your partner can figure out what your love languages are and it'll give you some tools and some advice to speak that love language to your partner. Now, love languages are incredibly important because oftentimes when we get into a relationship, we know what our love language is, or we kind of understand what our love language is. You think that if I speak my own love language to my partner, they're going to reciprocate that. But that's often not the case here. Actually, when my husband and I did this quiz in the book, we actually found out that our love languages are completely different. My strongest love language was his weakest love language and vice versa. So you often find that if you're with someone that you're incredibly compatible with, you often speak different love languages. And think about it like this. If you are in a relationship with someone and you are a fluent English speaker and that person is a fluent Spanish speaker, you guys won't be able to communicate because you don't speak their language and vice versa. It's essentially the same thing, but for our love languages and how we can effectively communicate with each other in order to have a sustainable, happy relationship. So the first love language we're gonna talk about is words of affirmation. And words of affirmation can look like a compliment or empowering your partner to do things or on a job well done the slap on the butt that pat on the back that they need in order to get through their day sometimes that can be like you look so beautiful or you're so handsome or you do such an amazing job at being a mom or being a dad or providing for this family those are examples of words of affirmation you really have to think about how that person is a affected by your words because clearly their love language is words of affirmation. So if you are constantly putting them down or you are disrespecting their name or something like that, they are not going to feel loved and that's gonna push that person further and further away. Being encouraging instead of saying, you look fat in that dress and you should probably take it off. That's not gonna get them to feel loved and that's going to trickle down into the relationship where you feel disrespected because they feel disrespected. So the next love language is acts of service. This love language is one of my two love languages and you will often find that you have two love languages that interchange depending on the season that you're in. But for me, in this season of motherhood and this season of my marriage, acts of service is really important for me. Acts of service is basically doing something without your partner's prompt to do that certain thing. Or even if you do give a prompt, just going above and beyond for your partner. So in my instance, I love when my husband washes the dishes or puts the dishes in the dishwasher. It makes me happy and it turns me on and it makes me excited to have sexy time with him. These things can really encourage your spouse or your partner for the things that you really love because another one of the love languages here is physical touch and that's my husband's number one. It also interchanges with another one. When my love language is met, his love language will then be met as well and vice versa. So you have to really think about these love languages as a way to communicate, but it's also a way that 
your partner will then reciprocate your love language in order to just create a better, happy and sustainable relationship. And a lot of times women often find that this is one of their top love languages is acts of service. So the third love language is receiving gifts. This can be so many things, right? You can buy an expensive gift if your partner really likes expensive gifts, or it can be a trip somewhere with your spouse or your partner, right? It could be anything, but this person loves to receive gifts, whether that's flowers or chocolates or anything really. I know a lot of people will say, well, I really want a nice gift, but that's not really sustainable. If you are thoughtful in your gift giving, that's really what matters for people whose love language is receiving gifts. So the next one, this is number four on our list, is quality time. Now, like I said, this is one of my top love languages. I love quality time, and I really appreciate uninterrupted quality time, meaning phones down, phones away, not really focused on everything else, but just having conversation and connection with my husband. And this quality time can be just spending time together, away from the kids, or it can be with the kids, with the family, but you are just focused on your family. You're focused on the time that you have together. You're not really distracted by other things like TV, video games, or the phone you really get to spend quality time with your family or with your spouse or with your partner. This can be, again, as little as just a walk in the park or it could be a vacation or something like that. Quality time is really important for people that need it and I'm one of those people that need quality time in our relationship. The last one and the fifth love language is physical touch. Now, this is my husband's number one, it interchanges between that and words of affirmation, but physical touch is a love language a lot of men have, or a lot of men feel love through the love language of physical touch. And physical touch doesn't always mean sex, but that is a huge component of this love language. It could be hugs, it could be kisses, it could be just being next to that person, having your hand on your partner. It could be as simple as that. For my husband, he loves his kiss when he comes through the door. We love belly button to belly button time okay so that is a love language that a lot of men have and so when you want your love language to be reciprocated right you also have to speak the love language of your partner if you need physical touch and if you want belly button to belly button time all you really have to do is speak your spouse's or your partner's love language so taking out the trash or washing the dishes for your spouse that will get them excited to have have physical touch and to engage in sexy time, okay? Those are the five love languages. This is the book. I highly recommend it. It will be linked down below. There is a quiz on the back for you guys to take. Take it with your spouse, with your partner, and see what love language you both have. It's really important in relationships to speak each other's love language and to understand what your love language is so that you can express that effectively to your partner. And I'm excited to see what your guys' love languages are in the comments down below. Let me know what you guys think about this video. This is one of my OG type of how-to videos and let me know if you guys want to see more of these and if you want me to cover any other books on my channel but that is my video for today guys i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please give it a big thumbs up subscribe down below and i will see you in my next one bye guys